I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we have three very important questions based on change subject. It also means isolate variable. Well, the worksheet which we are talking about has more than 100 questions to practice. Now, this question is at level 10, which is the highest level for now. So we have three questions here. All are quadratic equations as you can see. The question is to change the subject to x. That really means that we'll isolate x and make it an independent, from independent to dependent variable, right? So that's the whole idea. So at present, you can see y is dependent on x and it's written on the left hand side. We want to write x equals to what? That is what the change of variable or change of subject is. Now, in these three examples, there are a few important things to understand. One of them is that if I have a formula, which is a plus b whole square, it can be expanded as a square plus 2ab plus b square. So you see that this trinomial a square plus 2ab plus b square can be written as a plus b whole square. Now, if I have a minus b whole square, in that case, we have minus sign here, right? So that is how it works. So idea here is that if the first term and the last term are perfect square and the center term is twice them, in that case, we could write this as a perfect square. You can identify that question number one is a perfect square. Now, in question number two and question number three, we are going to adopt a different strategy and that is completing squares. So there are two different strategies to look into while we are changing the subject for these three examples, right? And that makes it difficult or a level tell question. So let's begin with the very first one. So in the first one we have y equals to x square minus 6x plus 9. Now you see that x is written as a perfect square itself, right? And 9 is also a square of 3. So you can write the center term as 2 times 3 times x. You get the idea. And therefore, we could write this term as x minus 3 whole square. Make sense? Once again, if we have a minus b whole square, that really means multiply a minus b with itself, right? And when you multiply and simplify, you get a square minus 2ab plus b square, right? So comparing this, we got our result. Perfect. So that is our first step. And now once we've done this step, we are in a position to change the subject or isolate x, right? see how. So what we are now writing this as, as x minus 3 whole square is equal to y. Now when you square root, remember that minus 2 square is 4 and plus 2 square is 4. You get the idea. And therefore, x minus 3, when we square root, will be plus and minus square root of y. Now this is also a very critical step, right? And therefore, when I take 3 to the right hand side, by adding 3 on both sides, we get 3 plus minus square root of y. So you see we have isolated the variable x and so we have changed the subject. You get an idea, right? So basically, if you look at this uh, graph of this function, right? So at this particular stage, we have a parabola which is opening upwards, correct? Kind of like this with the vertex at 3 and here we have a parabola which is opening on the sides. You get the idea, right? So uh, where this vertex is at, if I put y as equal to 0, we get x equals to 3, right? So from the vertex 3, 0, it becomes 0, 3, right? So that is how it is going to be. So so the values, they actually, uh, 
the swap, right? So, sorry, the, the x is not correctly marked. It should have been like this. So, at 0, it is 3, right? So, kind of like this. And it opens towards the right hand side. So, that is how we could change the subject. Is that clear to you, right? So, this example, the first one, was an example with which was a perfect square, right? So, this was a perfect square. So, let me write down here. We took a case of perfect square. Now, let's take the next example. Here, we have y equals to x squared minus 8x. Now, this is not a perfect square type of a polynomial. What do we do here? Well, in this particular case, we'll do completing squares. So, this is also a very important technique. How do we complete squares? So, we have y equals to x square minus 8x. So, half of 8 is 4. So, we add and subtract that half, 4 square, right? So, that makes the three terms a perfect square. You see that part, right? So, we have, can now write this as y equals to x minus 4 whole square. And this minus 4 square becomes minus 16. You get the You can expand and check your result. So, so this step is called completing the square. Since we added and subtracted a term, as you can see here, modified to help us make it a perfect square. Does make sense to you? So now let's rewrite this as x minus 4 whole square minus 16 equals to y. Taking 16 on the right hand side, I can write this as x minus 4 square equals to 16 plus y or y plus 16. Either way, you could write. Hmm? Is that clear to you? Now I can say x minus 4 is square root of y plus 16. Remember, we should write plus and minus. And x can now be written as 4 plus minus square root of y plus 16. So that is how we could change the subject and isolate x as shown here. This process, as I'm saying, is called completing the squares. Perfect. Now, that is the strategy which is normally adopted when the equation cannot be written as a perfect square directly. So, I hope this process is absolutely clear. So, let's now take up the next question, which is the um, similar to our bonus question. Do you see that bonus question? S equals to ut plus half gt square, which is a very popular equation in physics, which relates acceleration due to gravity, velocity, time, and height, distance. Now, here we have y equals to minus half x squared, 3x minus 1, right? So, we need to isolate x or change the subject to x. That is what we need to do. So, so the first step here will be Let's factor out minus half from the equation, right? So, if I factor out, I get x squared. So, we are trying to factor minus half from the first two terms, okay? We'll keep that minus one separate. So, now we have minus, multiplying by minus two, three, we get six, right? Minus six x. Makes sense? And here we have minus one. Now, we will add and subtract half of the value of 6 square, right? So, we have x square minus 6x. We'll add half of 6 is 3 and subtract 3 square. First three terms form a perfect square. So, it can be written as x minus 3 whole square minus 9, which is 3 square minus 1. We can now multiply and open the brackets. We get minus half x minus 3 whole square and that becomes plus minus is minus 9 by 2 minus 1. Clear? Now, we have, we can take this term minus half on the left hand side. So, we get half of x minus 3 whole square and taking y on the right hand side, combining these two, right? So, 9 by 4 let me write 9 by 4 minus 1 minus y. 9 by 4 minus 1 is 
9 minus, uh, sorry, it is 9 by 2, not 4. You have multiplied by half only, right? Correct. 9 by 2 minus 1 is 9 minus 2, which is 7, right? So we have 7 by 2 uh, minus uh, y. We can write 7 by 2 as 3.5, okay? Okay. So now, x minus y, x minus 3 is equal to what? x minus 3 whole square will be 2 times all this, which is 3.5 minus y. Let's square root it. So we get x minus 3 equals 2 plus minus. So whenever you square root, you have to write plus minus, right? 3.5 minus y. And then take 3 on the other side. So we get x equals to 3 plus minus square root of 2 times 3.5 minus y. Make sense? So that is how you see by completing the squares we could isolate x and that is the change of variable. So here we have applied completing the square method once again, right? Now this one was slightly different because we had coefficient as minus half. So I hope you have understood this strategy. Feel free to write a comment, share your views. And it's time for you to apply the strategies learned to answer the bonus question. I hope that makes sense. If you like to uh, learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Thanks for your time and all the best.